Hello and welcome viewers and subscribers of AVG News. My name is Mkwalisi, the son of Ngombe, uh, and I'm here to just give an update uh, on the fatal stoning of a triple C supporter in Harare yesterday afternoon. You will remember that yesterday we came here to report the sad news uh, on what has uh, happened. But we also said that the details that we had at that particular time were very sketchy and we didn't have much detail to give to you. And now we've had people sending us messages detailing what exactly happened uh, because what we had said is that we saw a video and that video uh, became sketchy uh, going forward and then we had uh, some other um, uh, information type of information coming from different sources and it was conflicting uh, the first information that we had was that uh, the triple c supporters were the, on their way to a rally and while on their way to a rally they met their zano pf counterparts were also going elsewhere and the skirmishes happened but now we've been corrected and we've been told exactly what happened from uh, some triple c supporters who say they were at the, at the place or at the venue uh, and they saw everything including one who says that um, he used to work with the deceased that is mr tinashe chitunge who we are told again is a father of two uh, who lived with his brother uh, in Glenview. Uh, it's very sad that uh somebody who had uh, some uh, sibling i mean some offspring that he had to take care of has now left them and is not gonna be seen again just because of his below of his political choices just because of his political activities and just because of uh his political uh, activism so the information that we have so far from those who say they were at the venue including some journalists who covered the event uh, is that uh, triple c supporters had booked a, a venue in glenview uh, it's, a, it's a sports ground which they had booked to hold a rally yesterday you would know that uh, we are less than three weeks before the 23 uh, august elections uh, which are going to be harmonized the zimbabwean elections where zimbabweans are going to elect their president their mps that is members of parliament that's uh, and their senators uh, as well as their councillors and just because of this uh, time that is left you know that the campaigning period ends uh, i think it's two weeks before the actual election so they have, the parties have to wrap up their campaigns before then so we are told that triple c supporters had booked this uh, sports ground which was meant to be a venue for their rally uh, the police had given them clearance council had given them uh, a, a go ahead with the booking but when they got there they found that a, a, a ZANU PF member who is a, an aspiring MP, that's what we are told, had bought people beer, grouped them there, and well, had put some speakers, loud speakers outside where people were playing music, and he had taken over the venue. People were playing soccer on the venue that had been booked. So this looks... Uh, like it was a counter to the triple c rally and triple c activists are saying that when they got there they found these people already occupying the venue they found them playing soccer others dancing and many others drinking beer so when they got there they tried to reason with these people that we booked this venue therefore can we start having our activities? Can you wrap up your activities so that we can start ours? But now, this is where the confrontation then started. Uh, they are saying that there were police there, but very few. And apparently these police officers were there, maybe for fear of being overpowered by ZANU-PF activists, or for fear of reprisals, because you know that whenever... Uh, there is events of political uh, there, there are incidences of political violence between zanu pf and any other party police uh, find themselves in a catch-22 situation whereby 
they don't know how to react because if you arrest a ZANU PF activist, what happens is that you face reprisals. There is an assistant inspector who we had, many of you had, uh, being insulted by a ZANU PF member, an MP who is also a deputy minister. And that police officer was told all sorts of things. He was called stupid, he was uh, threatened with being dealt with by a ZANU PF uh, member in his course of doing his job as per the constitution of Zimbabwe. He had arrested a, a ZANU PF activist by the name Danger. The, mini, the deputy minister herself also mentioned Danger, saying, Do you think uh, you're going to, to get away with this? Why don't you sit down with your other officers? Why don't you discuss this instead of arresting him? And the, 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 the police officer was saying, but he committed an offense and I've got all this evidence against him. But still, he was threatened and now we are told that he is missing. We don't know where he is, but uh, uh, in an internal police memorandum is said to have been dispatched uh, advising other police officers to arrest him and detain him for alleged uh, being absent without official leave. So instead of the police investigating this deputy minister, who is also an MP, for what she did, because she is supposed to be uh, the one safeguarding the demands of the constitution, but she's attacking a police officer who is on duty, and we find that this police officer didn't have any protection. So police officers, uh, in as much as they are expected to dispatch their duties, they are also expected to dispatch them selectively in as far as uh, the Zimbabwean political scenario is concerned because if they arrest ZANU-PF activists, they are then turned uh, uh, against and they are seen as supporters of the opposition. They can be transferred to some remote areas as punishment. They can be uh, expelled from their work. So I would like to believe that these police officers were at the venue of the ground uh, where this uh, attack on triple c happened were scared also of these reprisals so skirmishes started and zanu pf activists apparently they were already ready for triple c because they knew that when they got to this venue that these people had booked the venue and they were supposed to hold a rally and obviously they would come in numbers so uh, also considering that harare is a stronghold of triple c like any other uh, urban area so they attacked the triple c supporters according to what we were told they picked up stones they threw and they, they threw them they attacked triple c supporters with stones and in the process they injured so many triple c supporters and fatally struck one of them fatally struck mr chintinashe chitsunge who has been seen whose picture has been seen lying down in a pool of blood in a scene that is so 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 touching because you don't want to see such things it's a very graphic picture that's why we're not posting it here but it is something that uh, needs to be looked at we need the police officers especially the police command the police chiefs to take uh, strong action against this we have heard president uh, emerson nangakwa preaching peace he even called on police to arrest those that are committing acts of political violence. We had Deputy President uh, Constantino Chiwenga in Kai calling for peace. And we would like to believe that this was not just a, a, a campaign gimmick. It was something that came from their hearts because at the end of the day, a Zimbabwe whose elections are, uh, are questionable, whose results are disputed, whose run up to the election is bloody will not be easy to govern. We have seen that before. ZANU PF is out there trying to have sanctions uh, lifted, is trying to have Zimbabwe reincorporated into the Commonwealth. But these acts of political violence will put paid to those attempts. So, and also, Tinashe Tsunga, as we say, he had two kids. He obviously had relatives. He obviously had people who loved him. He obviously had people who were his comrades in Triple C. He also has the support of the whole world. So for somebody who was touched, who was attached to him, to see him lying in that pool of blood, 
would you think that they would then assist in trying to have the sanctions against Zimbabwe lifted? They would not. Even neutrals would say, but the sanctions are justified. I'm one of the people who has gone out there to say, we don't need sanctions against Zimbabwe, that they need to be lifted. But imagine a relative of mine being seen by the whole world lying in that pool of blood for only choosing to belong to a political party which resonate, whose uh, ideals resonate with his own principles. So at the end of the day, Zimbabweans, let us steer away from political violence. These politicians do not care about us. All they care about are positions of power, are positions that bring them close to the national pace so that they can start looting. They don't care about us. All of them, all of them, be it Nelson Chamisa, be it uh, Emerson Mnangakwa, be it Love Moma Duku, be it any politician, they don't care about us. To them, it's all about state power. It's all about gaining access to national resources. How they are going to distribute that wealth is something else. But at the end of the day, in their pursuit of political offices, it's all about themselves. It's never about us. So let us steer clear of this political violence. Let us campaign peacefully. Let us not kill each other. Whether you are ZANU PF, these people have been governing for the past 43 years. They have never done anything for you. Zimbabwe is industrious right now. The, politi the, the, the economic uh, fortunes of the country have continued to dwindle. They have continued to wane despite them being in charge. So for you to then go around killing fellow citizens for choosing somebody else is the highest form uh, of madness. Let us not do this. Let us think Zimbabwe. Let us value human life. Thank you very much. If you have any other information that you have, please feel free to send it to us via the comment section underneath this box and underneath this video. Or you can look up African Voice Global on Facebook. The page is AVG News. You can comment there. You can write on the timeline. You can even send us information via inbox. Thank you very much. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel, like this video, and share it. But most of all, let us have a peaceful run-up to the 23 August elections and a peaceful post-election period.